In this lecture, we will continue to talk about the Fourier series. Well, if you have a function that have a period t, then Fourier series say that any periodic function f of t can be expressed as indicated in equation 22. Now, if you look at equation 22, it say basically any function, periodic function f of t can be expressed as a combination, linear combination of cosine and a sine function. And also in equation 22, you notice that A0, AK, and BK, they are constant that need to be defined very soon. And as a matter of fact, the formula for A0 AK and BK will be given to you first, and then after that, I will prove to you why and how we get those formulas. So, the formula for A0 is given according to equation 23, which basically say a constant A0 is equal to 1 divided by the period capital T multiplied with the integral from 0 to capital T of the given function f of t dt. So that is the formula to compute the constant A0. And I'm going to prove it to you later on how do I get that formula. Similarly, we also give you first the formula to calculate the constant A k as indicated in equation 24. So according to equation 24, it says the constant A sub k is given as 2 divided by the capital T times the integral from 0 to t of f of t times cos k omega naught times t dt. Now, this constant A sub k, we say it is an even function. And the reason we say it is an even function is because if you replace k by the so-called minus k, let's see what happens. If you replace k by minus k everywhere in equation 24, then you can see uh, k replaced by minus k, and this k in here you also replace by minus k, okay? However, we all know that cosine of an angle, regardless that angle is equal to plus or minus, they are the same. And therefore, cosine of minus k omega naught t is the same thing as cosine of positive k omega naught t. And therefore, you can see that the definition of A sub k is the same thing as A of minus k. And for that reason, we say the function A sub k is an even function. Similarly, we have a formula to define the constant B sub k as indicated in equation 25. And as you can see, in equation 25, it says b sub k is equal to 2 over t times the integral of 0 to t f t psi of k over naught t. Now, that function b sub k, we say it is an odd function. Why do we call it an odd function for b sub k? The reason is because if we replace k by minus k everywhere. Let's see what happens. So if you replace k by minus k, all right, and then you also replace this k in here by minus k, then 
we can see clearly that sine of an angle with a negative sign, that should be equal to negative sign of a positive angle, A omega naught T. So what it means is the definition of B sub K is equal to the negative of B minus K. And for that reason, we say the function B sub K is an odd function. Now, this property that A sub K is an even function and B sub K is an odd function is very important for future development. In the next slide, what I'm going to prove to you is how do we obtain the formula to calculate those constants A0, AK, and BK. So for that, the way we did it is we start with the Fourier series expression, which basically say any periodic function f of t can be expressed as a constant A0 plus summation of a k cos k omega naught t plus summation of b k psi k omega naught t. So this is our starting point, just a Fourier series. After that, what we want to do is we want to integrate both sides by integrate both sides from 0 to t. So in integrate both sides, every term from 0 to t. We integrate every, every term from 0 to t. This is what we got. Then after that, we argue that according to the previous lecture, we know that the integral of the cosine function is equal to 0 according to the previous lecture. Furthermore, we also know according to the previous lecture that the integral of a sine function is also equal to zero. And therefore, you will see that equation 26 will be simplified as indicated in the next slide. Actually, you can see because the second term and the third term of equation 26 to become zero. So all we have on the right hand side is the integral of a zero dt. And we all know that the integral of the term a zero dt, that integral, it just simply become a zero times t, small t, between the limit from 0 to capital T. And that is exactly shown on the next slide, okay, as indicated in equation 27. So from equation 27, if you evaluate the small t with the upper limit capital T and then subtract small t with the lower limit 0, then the right hand side become A0 times capital T. And from this equation there, we can easily solve for the constant A0, which is indicated in equation 28. So basically, I already proved to you the formula to obtain A0, which is 1 over t times the integral ft dt. That is a formula that I already just proved to you. Okay.